Hi and welcome! In this video we're going to be talking a little bit about how Sniffy came about, what we do, our experience with game dev in the past, and the mistakes we've made in the last seven years of our business. A lot of people have been asking us uh, how we got started with Snooty and what's our backstory. So here's a little video about that. Snooty is our small little company which comprises of the two of us, Mr. and me, Claire. And our two little doggos, Moritz and Winky. We'll try to give lots of good advice in this video. Maybe you can learn from our mistakes. We certainly have learned a lot. Yep. So I hope you enjoy. Our backstory is that Krista and I met at Swansea Metropolitan University in 2011. I was studying 3D animation, uh, worked quite a bit in Maya, modeling, animation, etc. So learned quite a bit about that. And I did multimedia, so that was a bit of a jack of all trades, doing photography, websites, 3D animation as well, you name it. So uh, we both had Bachelor of Science, so we both did a bit of programming. Once we finished our degrees and graduated in 2012, we had been together for a year and a half. And we decided to move to Norway and start our own company. Business. Good idea. Right out of university. Highly not recommended. And what was our company going to do? We were going to make games. You know, there was all the rage of mobile games back in 2012. Yep. It was a great plan. No. Moving to Norway, we actually decided to move in with Krista's parents uh, for the first five years, which was actually really nice and pleasant. And yeah, we had a good time. And it gave us the opportunity to actually grow our company. They enjoyed our business or our presence, I guess. We had time to make mistakes and um, take a while before this business becoming profitable. It actually sounded like a grand plan to just make games since we had a game concept. And we had seen lots of other popular mobile games like games from Smogo. We were a huge fan of them. Yeah. And they were really, really cool. We liked them. We're like, why not just make one? I mean, what's the harm in it? Only difference we didn't know was that they had previous experience and um, we came fresh out of university. Yeah, without knowing how to actually make a game. Because we, were, we didn't have a game. No, degree, degree no. no. And uh, we were learning on the job. Yep. So by the end of uh, towards 2012, we've been experimenting with this different game concept of trying to learn the, the ropes of the game. Uh, ropes of the game? Yeah. The ropes of the game, yeah. Yeah. We had finally come up with a really cool concept, which was for Drift... Drift? <laughs> drift them. Driftbloom was a cute little side-scroller where you play as Amelia, a little girl who is in the dream world, painting the nightmare away. Drawing paint around and making everything colourful. Along the journey she would also meet some other little animals which would help her paint faster, etc. And it was a really nice cute concept that we came up with. So we initially designed Driftbloom as a mobile game because that was really the trend at the time. There's a lot of people releasing games on iOS and being successful. So we thought, why not? You know, we used Corona SDK, uh, mostly because of the fact that it used a language called Lua, which was very easy and intuitive for us to pick up. The only problem we had with Corona was actually the fact that it was all done in the code editor and not, it didn't really actually have a visual editor or, you know, an interface that we could edit with, which made it very hard for me and Krista to collaborate together. At the end of 2013, we went to the Nordic Game Day, where we were actually able to show off Driftbloom at the library. It was actually through showing off Driftbloom that we were able to get one of our big projects, Somerness. After we'd been uh, working on Driftbloom for a year, uh, we started doing some game time games to get some more inspiration and experiment and learn new things. And that's when we discovered really the power of Unity. And then it became really hard to go back to working in Chrome SDK after we have worked in Unity or a game engine which has a visual interface. One of the mistakes we did when working on Driftbloom was that we were uh, not sharing our work and we didn't realize until three quarter way through the year is when we started uploading screenshots and showing how the progress was going that it was already maybe a bit too late. We were actually also very afraid to share our work because of, you know, stealing, etc. That Yeah, we thought ideas were precious, but now we realize the most valuable thing about an idea is how much you value that idea yourself. And also validating the idea with others is just as important. Yeah, don't be afraid of sharing your ideas. We were also losing a lot of faith in Driftboom itself. And with the thought of the fact we needed to start earning money, our thought of porting it over to Unity just wasn't worth it. It was just wasn't. Already so much work put in and we were so far away from finishing. And I think we're also a little bit tired of not seeing more progress. Yeah, and with the looming thing that we want to make this sustainable business, it was really hard. As we mentioned, we made three game jam games uh, in Unity 3D. 
and we thought we would just skim over what we actually did make. Our first game was Fishing for Love, a seven day game jam game. In it, you are a hooked little fish who has to swim around and capture loads of words before you are reeled up by a fisherman. And the fisherman finds out that actually you have a bottle in your mouth. Which contains a love letter. And then you got to continue writing this love letter, the continuation of it, of the previous player. And so it was like a little multiplayer. And everybody that contributed to that little letter would get it sent to their email with the finished completed letter, which was a lot of fun. The next game was uh, No Better Than Dinosaur, which was um, about a little adventure game about humans being lower in the food chain than dinosaurs. What if dinosaurs were not uh, extinct uh, all those years ago by the meteor? And you walk around in the world and find little puzzles that you kind of solve and riddles with a mobile phone and then you can call the meteor delivery service and you will see how the future change uh, and you can, yeah, it's um, maybe a bit more of an environmental theme to it. Only One Light was our final Game Jam game which we made, which was for the 48 hour Ludum Dare. That was a lot of stress to make it in 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. You play as the flame of the Drift Bloom. You have to jump from matchstick to matchstick to get up to the Drift Bloom before your time runs out and your flame disappears, which is really sad. It was actually right after this Game Jam that we picked up Moritz from Germany and he became a new part of our Smithy team including our little fluffy other hand terrier called Lonely. Yes. Our team was expanding with more doggos. Yes. All the music for the games we've been working on have been made by a good friend of ours, uh, Tour Trillion, and he's been making really lots of original soundtracks and has always a new take on things. So, unfortunately, in January 2014, we decided to stop working on Driftbloom and game development and start focusing more on websites. <laughs> Thanks to showing off Driftbloom in 2013 at the Nordic Game Day, we actually received a rather unique project at the beginning of 2014 to convert a summer reading campaign from a paper version to a digital version. Working in collaboration with the Vespol Fylkeskommune and the Vespol libraries around here, we created Summerless, which is an online reading campaign that's still running today. It took a good few years to actually get Summerless to be nationwide, but we finally managed to reach that in 2018. And I've had a lot of kids participate in. It's become a huge success and helping kids to read is an added bonus. It's a very feel-good project. On this project, we also work with our good friend Shaivia, who is doing amazing artwork for this uh, campaign and making it really shine. We have just made so many cool posters throughout the years and also, yeah, all the design that goes into this. Our game dev journey didn't actually end with Driftbloom. In 2015, Christer proposed to me using a little sweet game that he had made. Under the alias of Marry Me Game, he'd actually been working on this game for two years. And I had actually spotted a really, really cool Twitter account called Marry Me Game and thought that the game looked really awesome and so inspirational that someone would actually propose using a game. Little did you know, it was secretly me. <laughs> I was pretty good at keeping that secret. And there was a reason the game was maybe taking two years to make. We spent every minute of the day together. So he basically had to do it whilst I was reading at night. This game was a little co-op experience where you were running around the forest as two foxes, which had two little paths that you need to go down and collaborate on little puzzles to reveal the path forward. This path throughout the wilderness and was a little story based on our relationship. And right at the end, he had it the path actually spelled out, will you marry me in French? With a typo, of course, because I'm not that good in French as you. So we actually married officially in 2015. I did say yes, obviously, as you might already know. No, she was totally confused. It was like, there's a, there was a typo in the game. I'm not sure if you really mean it. I know, probably didn't. <laughs> didn't mean it. At the end of 2015, we actually lost our cute little can terrier, Bonnie. And she was actually one of the main inspirations for quite a lot of our games and for Drift. She was a good team member of the Snooty HQ team. She Morris. was 14 years strong. And more is missed. So we had to bolster our ranks in the future. We got Winky Poo to join our team. But that's for later. A bit further down the line, we were also asked to make another reading campaign, which is called Nuli Unjur, uh, which is a reading campaign uh, based around schools and making uh, classes compete against each other. And this is for the Nordly bookstore chain. And it, that's also a campaign that's running today. We've been doing that one since 2016. And it's also going really strong. So reading became our little niche uh, unknowingly. Yep. Well, reading's good. So, you know, it's a good thing to promote. 2018. Winky became a part of the Snitty team. Yes, that's our little chihuahua, just so you know. 
We also decided we didn't want to get a puppy. We wanted to adopt since we adopted Moritz. And even though he was quite a challenge, we wanted to do it again. She's become a fine little chi. During 2019, we wondered a little bit about what we would be working on. Summerless and the reunion have been quite big projects for us, so we didn't want to get any other big projects. So we decided, why not just try and get back to doing game development again? So Summerless and Nordian are both those projects have kind of grown to reach all of Norway. I'm really happy with it, and we're going to keep maintaining those projects. And now we were wondering what new areas we could explore. One of the things we've noticed since doing game development in 2013 is that the game development scene has changed a bit, and at the same time, not as much. It's still very friendly. There's yep. still a lot of Twitter, and it's still Screenshot Saturday. Uh, though game engines and technology have certainly moved forward, assets have become much more common, and I think you can work much more efficiently. I think this is a great time to go back into game development. We thoroughly enjoy working on game development, and obviously you're focusing on making quite a lot of small games so that we can learn more about the ropes of making games. One of the mistakes we actually made in the past was that we didn't actually make small games, we jumped into making a big game like Driftbloom, which made it very hard for us to learn the different mechanics and different things you could make with game development. Quality comes from quantity, and especially efficient quality, which is so important when you're working in a team of two. Uh, efficiency is everything. We do hope to actually go back to making Driftbloom, but that's in the future. For now, we're focusing on just the small games. As you can see in the background, this is uh, Driftbloom, uh, a painting a friend of us uh, made. And uh, we really hope that will one day become the game of our dreams. <laughs> and inspire us in the future, hopefully. Yeah, inspired to actually make that game come true one day. We are so grateful to Krista's parents for actually letting us be able to stay at home with them for the first five years and giving us the opportunity to start our company in a risk-free way. You never know really how long it's going to take for you to become profitable in your business. And I think it's a really good idea to make sure that you're sustainable through the process so you don't have stress on your shoulders while trying to get your creative uh, juices going. Yep. We really do not recommend for people to actually just jump out of university and start making a company unless they have a way better plan than we actually did. We would heavily advise people to not just quit their jobs and burn through their savings to make games or a company, unless you have a very, very good plan. We were very fortunate to actually have the opportunity to have a risk-free start to our journey and not worry about it. But there were times when we were losing faith in our company and were considering to get part-time jobs to just help and sustain us. We're very grateful today that we did manage to pull through. And uh, now that we are able to sustain ourselves, we can now let game development take the time it needs to actually become profitable for us, and that'll probably be a couple of years. We are so excited to finally be able to do game development again. And even though it's going to go quite slowly for us, and we're going to be making these small little games instead of just jumping straight into making a ginormous game, we're very satisfied making, for example, Mission Squeak, The Life of Mr. Pips, and Cars from Heaven. This is a little bit of a different episode from what we've been shooting previously, but since so many people wanted to hear more about our story, we thought we would share it with you guys. And yes, it's quite lengthy. I mean, it's seven years we've compacted in this video, which I have no idea how long it is. Thank you so much for watching and hearing our story about how we started and the seven years of business, which has been a lot of up and down, and also hearing about how our game dev journey actually did start. Hit that like and subscribe. Smash it if you like. Now, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great week and we'll see you around till next time. Soon, soon.